I've definitely become more decisive and confident as a carver. I know where to put the knife and uh, how deep to cut it in. Yeah, I can't say it any better than that. Yeah, I have a real, I have a real appreciation for simplicity in other aspects of my life too. Um, I think in food and in vehicles and, and in housing. Uh, while I, I use the internet uh, to some extent, um, I'm not um, sort of, I'm not incredibly high tech in that aspect either. My name is Harley Refsal, and I've been doing wood carving for about 40 years. I've never known a time when people didn't work with their hands. I was surrounded by people who did things by hand, who created things by hand, just as a part of normal everyday living. So it was perfectly normal for me too, when I got started working with my hands, that I would make things that I would use for everyday life. And for me, that was toys. I wanted a tomahawk very, very badly, but my parents weren't real crazy about uh, going out and buying a tomahawk for me. So I made one out of the end of a peach crate. and. Um, I would do things with my hands all the time. For me, creativity is when I was able to start to design my own carvings, for example, rather than looking at the work of others and, and copying theirs. That's an important step along the way. Uh, but things really start to roll and become even more and more fun when a person can start to design your own figures and be, uh, let your own creativity flow. The distinction between artist and craftsman is, uh, is not all that old. That probably doesn't go uh, back more than a couple of hundred years at the time of the uh, Industrial Revolution. Before the Industrial Revolution, pretty much everything was made by hand. But after the Industrial Revolution, uh, when things started to get more and more made by machines, then uh, making things by hand became uh, less common uh, because it became more expensive. So things today that are crafted or artisan made, sometimes we call them too, are going to be more expensive perhaps because they're more labor intensive, uh, but they also have uh, soul and they come alive in a way that, uh, that mass produced items just don't have. I think among younger people, there's growing interest in doing things with one's hands. Uh, if that be cooking classes, if that be um, making things of all kinds. Um, and I think that there is a, a return to a desire to make things with one's hands for different reasons now. Not because we can't buy them. Now we can buy them cheaply. We can buy, we can buy way more than we need to buy. So um, that which is handmade today becomes very, very precious. So many jobs today are ones in which a person sits by a computer all day and that just don't allow for the same kind of creativity that's built in as a natural part of the job like that used to be, used to be the case. So I think it's very important that that, that itch to, to create is still there. And I think that itch needs to be scratched. And when it doesn't come in our, in our jobs, then I think we have to 
take a course or pick it up in, a, in an informal way because that desire to create and the satisfaction that we get from that uh, is stronger perhaps than ever it's been. I wear a knife all the time um, and have for 25, 30 years or so. Um, and um, I like to use a handmade knife. Uh, this isn't the one that I carve figures with. I use one that is has a thinner blade because then I'm making, this is a wide, uh, pretty thick blade um, that's I use for everything from cutting a pizza to, uh, I could to splitting wood. I can use this for just about anything. Um, but if I'm doing figure carving, then I'm making plunge cuts. I'm cutting into the wood. And so then I want a little bit narrower blade because I can, uh, it'd be harder to, to push in this, this uh, thick knife. When I've been able to teach, I've gone all over the country and many other countries as well. Uh, this is something that I never sat down and did in some kind of a career plan years ago. Um, in 2012, for example, I taught about 30 classes uh, from coast to coast in this country and also in Scandinavia. The people that I've met in conjunction with carving have, have greatly enriched my life. My carving has grown into a very, very important uh, aspect of my life. Uh, not only the carving that I do myself, uh, but also the teaching that I do. Uh, and sometimes I've said to my wife, I'm not sure which I enjoy more, if I enjoy carving myself or if I enjoy the teaching of carving. Carving has really taken me to many different countries around the world and has uh, introduced me to people that I would have never met and uh, it enriches my life a, a great deal. This is a horse that I used to um, tell our boys about when they were little. And there were, um, Tiny would travel with me when I would go off and teach someplace. I would keep him in my pocket like this and, and um, they would get cards back from tiny and telling about things that he had experienced and seen, uh, signed with a little hoof print at the bottom. So um, tiny um, told about his adventures and what he saw pretty much wherever I wherever I traveled because he went right with me. <laughs> <laughs>